Welcome back dear viewers, hope you've had a time for a quick cup of tea um, and sitting settled. So we've just come back from Daily Du'a's, um, alhamdulillah, lovely session, always a pleasure with Brother Ibrahim Al-Ansari. Um, so now I'm going to welcome our onto our specialist, um, continuing our conversations about um, various topics relating to mental health, um, stress and, and everyday niggles here and there that we all face um, and to talk to us is brother Bilal Ali. Welcome, Asalaamu Alaikum. Alaikum Asalaam. How are you doing today? Good, good, alhamdulillah. Good, so we are going to go into mental health which is a vast topic. And vast and a passion of mine. Good. Deeply passionate good. So about the this right topic person we have. In, in the, in, indeed. indeed. Um, and indeed. you know, I, I think a lot of our experiences if we're not passionate or we don't have that in our line of work it's not you know unless it touches us in a capacity that you know someone we know we don't really know much about mental health except that oh that person has a condition but how we deal with it the stigmas we hold around it because of our ignorance and that's what I'm hoping that we can through our conversation we can you know you can enlighten me inshallah the viewers as well um, about how we can be more supportive um, and obviously we could go through anything ourselves in our own lives it's mm -hmm. no so in terms of um, your experiences when you're talking to people, perhaps in our community, outside, what kind of things do you face that, you know, kind of, you know, the, the kind of conditions that you, you, you deal with um, when it comes to mental health? Um, the condition, I'd say conditioning, the mm -hmm. biggest um, issue that I face is people's attitudes towards mental health more than just you know yeah i meet people who are experiencing the depression yeah they have, and sometimes people have anxiety disorders you know a, a variety yeah. of psycho um emotional um, cognitive you know challenges mm. that they have yeah. that you know, we would classify as mental health but there is um such a stigma such a negative attitude in large portions of the the muslim community um, regarding mental health, that um, that is to me the biggest challenge. There's been some real progress I've observed over the last say ten years. It's a real shift yeah. that's taking place in different sections of the Muslim community to the point where, um, you know, in the past there were some communities when somebody was unwell, they would take the person to the imam when the person had a mental health problem, and instead of that person being referred on to professionals, they may yeah. be, um, you know, trying to choke the gin out the personal you know some yeah. bizarre superstitious type um, yeah. applications to try and address this but now you have you know um, imams various clerics who have um, you know th they tend to be the first port of call but they now have a there's a now more of an attitude to refer people on Great. to specialists yeah and in um, one particular part of East London you actually have um, two Muslim organizations who practice um, Rukia and other type you know particular method of faith healing and that is oftentimes in a concert with a person's um, mental health right. um, treatment. So the person may be getting long-term psychotherapy, they may be getting short-term counseling, they may be even receiving medication, but the, um, the rookie practitioner will be encouraging that person, you know, t t make sure you're taking medication and I'll see you next week. We're going to do another session of rookie, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. But So yeah. they're working together because... Um, the That's site, what, what, what I mean, and then because what they're recognizing in, in, in mainstream mental health in this country is that a person's spiritual um, calling, a person's spiritual inclination is a support mechanism, and it, it doesn't have, it's not. Has, it doesn't have this attitude of well, that's you know superstition or that's just religious well, stuff. It's a hindrance. To yeah, them. it's a hindrance. Yeah. Now it's seen as okay. This this can be a asset in in because yeah. of per, treating a person holistically. Right. So that's, I think that's really progressive that in that particular um, section of East London that you have you know mental health practitioners working side by side with with people who heal in a faith based method. What kind of um, sort of mental health? Um, conditions do you see like for instance someone who has absolutely no idea what mm -hmm. kind of you know you, you mentioned depression you mentioned you know these are all terms that people okay. what would you say would be more serious that things that just can happen to anybody really any time in their life so there's there's some conditions where we would say that um they would it would be i, I use the term more like to do with psychosocial because it could be like depression for example right. maybe more related to a person's life experiences mm -hmm. and how they've attempted to or failed to address those those issues in terms of life issues and then um, they just basically built up and they've just at one point they can't cope yeah okay. yeah they get to a point where there's a there's either a, um, 
you know, like a kind of an epiphany that, you know, this is gone too far yeah. or it's just something that happens, you know, slowly over a, p a period of time that, you know, a person recognizes them. So it's been a while now, but um, I, I don't think um, I don't think I'm OK. Sometimes people come to to me as a, as a therapist and they're not quite sure what the issue is. Right. And what takes place in, in the assessment is for me to help them to kind of understand what's going on. But then there's other people who they know what the problem is and they're specific. And in terms of identifying what they want to work on, what they want to address, it's crystal clear. It's absolutely crystal clear. And, and both are fine, both yeah. are fine. Sometimes we're not, we know something's wrong, but yeah. we're not sure what it yeah. is, but we just know something isn't right. So if someone came and they weren't aware, they were hearing voices or they were, you know, something wasn't right with them, said, I just mm -hmm. don't feel myself. And, would you be able to sort of, what would your steps be? Would you diagnose them? Would you say, okay, you need to go to someone that's sort of more clinical, mm -hmm. um, general practitioner, or would you say, would you help them in that, in, in the symptoms that they're describing to you? Uh, it depends on what the symptoms it is that they, um, what they portray. And what I mean by that is, um, that's why in terms of working as a, in, in, in private practice, there's a whole screening process. Right. So, you, and one of the things that you explore for are, are, you know, are you on medication? Okay. Anything that would affect your mood, anything mm. that would impact your mood, or have you got a history of mental health in terms of have you had a diagnosis for a particular disorder, a particular uh, issue? Mm. Have you had counselling or talking therapy or you know psychological intervention in the past? Or have you had issue? Do you have issues with substance misuse? Um, any addictions? Right things of this nature. There's a series of questions in you terms of the screening to, yeah. process and then that would inform me as a practitioner in what direction um, this needs to go. Or it depends on where the person was referred because sometimes I, I receive referrals where that has taken place okay. already by a, by a third party and they're referring them onto so myself. So you have a young, hypothetically, you have a young Muslim um, boy coming to you, late teens, early twenties, and says, you know, my family say that I need to pray more, mm -hmm. but I'm just not feeling myself. I'm hearing voices. I just don't feel like I haven't got the, the you know, the mood to get up in the morning yeah. to do anything. I don't even feel like praying. Um, and but my parents just say I need to snap out of it and you know get on with it because my faith is is weak. When oh, when you mentioned something like hearing voices, that is um, one of the symptoms of psychosis. Psychosis is a particular um, like a particular mental health order. It can be quite serious, and the the, the impact of a person's life. If it's not treated yeah. early, yeah, can be very detrimental. Um, it's in my opinion or my view. It's almost as if if a person's hearing has a, epi a psychotic episode, yes, um, and it's not treated, and they continue to have these various psychotic episodes, it can almost become um, interwoven into their personality to, until see. it becomes like yeah. full blown um, schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. One of the things that um, is taking place in mental health, in mainstream mental health though is a, uh, a move away from, for example, labeling. So instead of labeling somebody as a schizoid or a right. schizophrenic, yeah. um, it's tend to say that person has had an episode. I see. As, as a, you know, an yeah. episode, meaning a psychotic episode where they were, you know, maybe hallucinating and stuff like yeah. that. It can be stress induced, it can be genetic factors, it can be a number of factors which, yeah. which cause or trigger that. But the um, interesting thing about it is as much as that can be, you know, for somebody to actually hear, the, you know, hearing voices and have an episode, as much as that can be so unnerving, it can be discombobulating, disturbing, but there is real help. If, if intervention takes place yeah. early on, people go on to live um, regular functional lives. I mean, sometimes people have um, periods where, you know, this is, mm. you know, unfortunately that this is the type of thing that happens to them, but there is support mechanism in place that they can still live functional lives. It doesn't have to define yeah. their lives. And that's yeah. what is, I think, in part, this move away from labeling people because it becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy yeah. where I can't do this okay. because I'm a yeah. schizo or I yeah. can't do that or I'm like, as opposed to, or people labeling them and speaking down or being pejorative. But I guess that comes down to sort of, you're talking about practitioners that are moving away, but when that trickles down into society, it does take time, doesn't it? And for sure. And for instance, we know in, like I said, so the, you know, obviously the question I asked was, how do parents, you know, if, if they're making their children or, you know, somebody's coming and saying, well, actually, I, I, I feel like, you know, maybe my faith is, is because I've got, I lack faith. How would you as a, as a practitioner say? I, th I think that's too simplistic. I mean, mm. you know, people, bec um, everybody has mental health. Everybody has mental health. And I think that's what we have to, um, I can't emphasize that enough and I okay. really want to get that across. Everybody has mental health. Mental health isn't, um, how can I put it? It isn't a, 
is it or isn't it? It's yeah. a case of it's on a continuum. Right. Right. So sometimes we experience good mental health, different events happen in our life, physically, mm -hmm. emotionally, um, whatever the case may be. And sometimes we experience poor mental health. For example, our stress levels are increased. We may be experiencing anxiety. Some people have a mental health condition where it's something of a more life impacting nature and it takes more specialist intervention, psychiatric help yeah. to support that person or it takes psychological help to help to deal with the emotional fallout of that. But help is available, but, but we're, I, all we're all on that continuum spectrum, yeah. and different times in our lives our mental health may be in the decline. We may experience poor mental health. Somebody's living a comfortable life, they've got a settled family, they have a good job, yeah. um, or, or they're an entrepreneur, whatever, experiencing um, you know, yeah. um, you highs. Know, yeah. highs. And then the market crashes, or they, or a they lose somebody, a bereavement, yeah. an unforeseen bereavement, not just where yeah. somebody's um, ill for a period of time and they, and they decline, but you know, out of the blue, these yeah. things happen. Wouldn't, that per wouldn't it be natural for that person's mental health to change and to go into a decline? Definitely. And then depending yeah. on what support mechanisms they have or how they cope with those, with that challenge, would determine if they further decline or if they, you know, come back to their kind of fluctuate between yeah. their norm on the, con mm. on the continuum. Mm. Do you think, um, specifically as for Muslims, we, we can show more compassion towards people that we, perhaps we, our attitudes need to change? Or is it something that you think... We are, because we are opening up as a community, because obviously you work on the wider spectrum as well, yeah. but in, in terms of what's specific to us in our community, do you think that we could do more as a community? There is, there is um, we could do more, but um, I've spoken on panels um, at, you know, in Marlboroughs mm -hmm. about addictions and you know, a variety of mental health issues, and I know that there is a um, Shia Muslim um, mental health organisation, um, NMG, which does some really serious work behind the scenes, you know, working abroad in terms of um, training mm -hmm. um, in the Middle East, offering training and supporting um, organizations and, you know, professionals abroad um, and running workshops in the community. It tends to be um, professional practitioners that, that um, you know, support each other, but then they take that into their pockets of communities, that learning and that right. sharing those insights. Yeah. And when there's a wealth, there's, I mean, there's consultants, top psychiatrists, really, um, without name dropping, but there's really some really yeah. movers and shakers yeah. in the mental health field that are um, a part of this, this August body. And um, yeah, there's, there has been I, a shift, there has yeah. been a shift, but we want it to trickle down more, we want it to become more common yeah. that it's a part of our everyday living. Mental health is a part Definitely. of it. Um, because I, um, because I was speaking to um, a sheikh recently and um, as somebody that you know leads a center, and he said, you know, we, we have, people coming and denying, so perhaps the, the family member is, is known to be unwell, but they won't, they'll deny it because they don't want the stigma mm -hmm. that is attached to their child and, you know, they've got to think about their future, their marriage and things like that. And, um, and then he was saying that, you know, we need organisations to come into our centres to educate people that, you know, that isn't just their child, it's the community's child and it, it's not just their child, it's happened to, but it could happen to anybody. Exactly. Um, so exactly. in terms of the organisations you're saying, so perhaps there's sort of more work that perhaps people could be inviting them, they could reach out and, and, and mm -hmm. actually educate people that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not, like you said, we've all got mental health. Um, we don't know when and where it could actually... We don't know where, we're, we're in what direction it will no. move. But um, yeah, it's, it is a shame that, um, that the stigma exists, but we're working through um, culture, if you could put it that way, and what people's, you know, kind of ingrained reactions, and we're trying, excuse me, change. Yeah. You know, change the attitudes and let people understand that, um, you know, somebody can have a mental health issue and they may receive help and then they can move forward in their lives. I know, I know that this, you know, it's, it's kind of a controversial issue because it can affect people's marriage or potential yeah. of getting yeah. a marriage, for example, because they were known to have, a, or that family's known to have somebody with mental health. And we, need, we do need to move away from, from things of that nature. It doesn't, it doesn't help anybody. And it leads to people even feeling ashamed to come forward and seek help. So then you have yeah. people in denial yeah. trying to hide Seeing the signs and symptoms in themselves, but thinking about what's the consequences in the community. Yeah. So let me try and hide and fudge it. Yeah, which and, is so uh, unfortunate. If that... You know, oftentimes things get worse yeah. before they get better because they don't but seek that help. It's a judgment, help. isn't it? Because, for instance, if somebody has a diagnosed condition, say by, they have bipolar, yeah. they're on medication and they have um, an acute phase, then, you know, they could have... Um, sort of, they could be different to what their usual self would yeah. be. Yeah. And if someone doesn't know, that they're not well, and suddenly this person behaves in an erratic way, 
that judgment is going to be there. Oh, that person's bizarre. You know, they behave mm -hmm. like, because mm -hmm. they don't know, and they don't and yet, if, yeah, they don't understand because obviously there's no diagnosis, and and so immediately that person's going to be treated differently, judged, which is not nice. Um, and then if we were more open, we'd be perhaps more understanding that you know what this person at this point needs support. Yeah. Um, I mean, how would you sort of as a last comment? How these? How are we going to improve things in our community? I think we have to remember our religion, um, not remember our religion to say, oh, if you've got depression or you're going through mental health problems, you've got poor faith, but more to be rem um, to be reminded that our uh, Islam is a religion of rahmah, a religion of mercy, and where there is no rahmah, there is no Islam. So yeah. we need to be merciful to one another and um, compassionate. Right? This is a sunnah. This is what we know about. So yeah. that's our religion, not judgmental and pushing people out, yeah. but being accepting or understanding or kind to people. That's a lovely point to finish on. So really to the viewers, you know, if we suspect somebody's not quite well, to show that rahmah, to extend compassion and do less of the judging and just think that we are, if that child is of the community, it's everyone's child. And they used to say that, you know, that a whole village would raise a child. Yeah, it takes so, a village to raise a child. And That's even right. though we've not in those villages back home, but we are in communities here. So it's in the wider, wider context. It's not even just community, it's, it's a human mm. nature to reach out and be compassionate. So thank you so much. Um, it's a vast topic, as we said, we'll just try to, you know, touch the basics and say, well, how could we make it? How can we make those changes in our own life, perhaps for people we know and support them? So, inshallah, you have a blessed day ahead of you. And inshallah, we'll see you another morning. Inshallah. And I hope you've enjoyed um, that session. And now we are going to head off to Fahima and Sana. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they're cooked because I would like some as well.